Hey everyone that's joining, we're going to be starting very, very soon going through a little bit about genetic fingerprinting and also about um, a particular type of exam question that I've seen come up to do with gel electrophoresis. So that is what we're going to be going through in today's session. Okay, I think we are good to get started. It looks like it is working on all platforms so we can begin. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on from this because that's not what we're doing today. A little bit of what we're going to be going through does link to the concept of um, DNA probes and DNA hybridization. So just to point out a few key things that you need to be aware of. You do need to know the definition of a DNA probe, and that is a short, single-stranded piece of DNA. And you'd need to say it's complementary to a specific allele. DNA probes are often also labelled so that you can then attach it to DNA and then locate that DNA. So it might be a radioactive isotope or fluorescent marker. DNA hybridization, this is occurring when the DNA probe, so what we just talked about here, binds to its complementary base sequence within a DNA sample. And this is the premise behind the idea of screening to see if someone might have the alleles for a particular disease or it could be linked to personal medicine as well. But again, that's not the key focus for today. So I'm gonna move on. As I said, we're gonna be going through genetic fingerprinting for A-level and um, I'm gonna do an exam style question with you as well. But just as a recap to start, genetic fingerprinting is using this concept of VNTRs. And VNTRs are regions that you have within your DNA. They're non-coding regions of DNA, which have variable number tandem repeats, VNTRs. And these variable number tandem repeats, these are short sequences of bases repeated a variable number of times. So basically you have these short sequences of bases repeated over and over and over, but those VNTRs are unique to an individual. So we can use these VNTRs as a way to identify genetic patterns, for example, or you could use it for paternity testing, forensic science, medical diagnosis, animal plant breeding. And this was a key one I was saying earlier as well about the um, looking at genetic diversity. So the process then of genetic fingerprinting is split into these stages here. We've got collection, which is when you collect your sample, you need to extract your DNA sample, you need to digest it, which means cut it up, separate it, we then need to hybridize it, develop it and analyze it. So I'm gonna do a brief recap of that before we then go through um, the exam question. Okay, so collection, this is when you'd collect your sample. And if you are deliberately testing an individual who's volunteering, then you can easily collect it from body cells such as hair follicles or a cheek swab. You can get it from blood. Basically any cell that has a nucleus in with DNA can be used. And then there's an overlap with topic two here because to extract that DNA, you would need to do cell fractionation and ultra centrifugation. Once you've got your sample of DNA, we then use PCR to get large quantities of it. So we've now got our DNA sample. We've got large quantities of it. Next, we need to digest it. So that's our next step. So digestion, this is when we'd use our restriction endonucleases, which are the enzymes that can break the phosphodiester bonds and therefore cut DNA into smaller fragments. I'm not going to be going through lots of details on that, but um, when you learn gene or creating DNA fragments, one way that you can do that is using restriction endonucleases. And you learn about this idea of restriction sites and palindromic sequences, sticky ends. That's gonna be relevant for the question that we're gonna do soon. The separating bit, this is your gel electrophoresis. This is how you would separate out fragments of DNA that you've just cut up here. And a common question that comes up is, how or why does that DNA separate? And it's always two marks. One mark is because the DNA has a negative charge. So that's what I've got written here. DNA is negatively charged, and that's because of the phosphate group on it. And because it's negatively charged, 
when we put the DNA, you can see, I don't know how well you can see, but when you micro pipette the DNA into these wells in the gel and you apply that electric charge, the DNA moves towards this end, which is positively charged. So it's going to move towards a positive because DNA is negative. This end's positive, so it's going to attract it. So that's number one. DNA is negatively charged. Number two, though, the reason the DNA separates out is we've cut the DNA up into pieces. Bigger pieces, so longer pieces with more DNA base sequences in, the bigger the piece, the slower it will move. The smaller the piece of DNA, the faster it will move. So you end up separating out the DNA bands according to their size. And that's something we're going to focus on in the exam question we're going to do. Next is how you can actually visualize that, because that's already happened in this well over here, but you can't actually see it. So we have to do some hybridization and develop it. So this is when you might add your DNA probes, which we said are short, single-stranded pieces of DNA. We'd need to make them complementary to the VNTRs that we've cut our DNA up into. And you'd make sure the probe is either radioactively labelled or fluorescently labelled, because then we can actually visualise the positions of those bands by, if it's radioactively labelled, you could use X-ray. And if it is fluorescently labelled, we would then use UV light. Okay, so last little bit of genetic fingerprinting is um, the development stage. So the development stage, actually I've just talked about that because it's when you use your x-rays and UV light. So the analysis, you might be able to see um, this example here. And this is actually from a school trip from 2015. I can't believe how old this photo is now, 10 years old. When I took some year 12s to Imperial College, we went on a school trip to do this entire genetic fingerprinting process. And we were given um, our ladder so you can compare the known sizes of DNA to your marker, the ladder. We were then given five DNA samples from bacteria and an unknown sample. And we had to do that whole process and then our final step was the analysis and we were asked looking at your results which bacterial species is the unknown and you can see here it is number three because we've got bands in the same positions at that point whereas the unknown it does have a same um, position band as this one but it doesn't have any of those bands and it can't be these because the bands are at different positions and that's what you do you look at the positions of those bands so that is uh, a quick overview of that. A few key things just to point out. So this is, and I, I could see in the comments, some of you were asking that, um, which topic is this? So for AQA, this is topic eight, specifically it's 3.8.4. That's actually something earlier in the notes I wasn't looking at. So 3.8.4 um, and some key points then. So understanding restriction enzymes, make sure that um, a common question that does come up is describe how restriction endonucleases and DNA ligase are used to insert a gene in a plasmid. So the sort of thing you need to say is restriction endonucleases cut the plasmid and produce the sticky ends. And then ligase joins the gene, or you could say the plasmid, the sticky ends, or forms phosphodiester bonds. But that's the level of detail. Uh, right. Also, remember that the reason, oh, I said this one earlier, the reason the DNA separates in gel electrophoresis is number one, DNA is negatively charged. Number two, the DNA is different sizes. That's why it separates out. Um, so these are actually not live, these notes. These are my new AQA notes that are going live on Monday. It's mainly the same content, but I have changed some of it to reflect some of the mark schemes in more recent years as well as you've got examiner's tips and it's going to come with questions and answers and summaries at the end of every topic as well but what we are focusing on now then is using that concept of the genetic fingerprinting and gel electrophoresis for me to go through with you an exam question that came up recently that was really really badly answered and in fact I, the version of this question that i'm doing um, it's obviously not exactly the same question, but I think it was something like 75% of students did not get this question. So let's have a go. 
the question is, I'm going to draw out, this is DNA. We have a DNA molecule and we're going to use two enzymes, two restriction and nucleases to cut, cut up our DNA um, in that digestion stage we talked about. So I'm going to show one of my restriction endonucleases like this. So restriction endonuclease one. And then I'm going to do um, the other one looking like this. and just show you where they are cutting. So restriction endonucleases, we just went through this. Restriction endonucleases cut the DNA at specific locations, which are called restriction sites or recognition sites. So this particular endonuclease can cut here. So there'll be a particular DNA base sequence at those positions that it can cut at. And then this one, is cutting at this position because that's where it happens to be able to cut. And what you need to say then is, after gel electrophoresis has occurred, what positions the bands would be, um, the band positions would be under two different situations. So I'm gonna say experiment one is, um, I'm gonna do restriction under nuclease two only. And ex oh, experiment two is both enzymes. Okay, so we're then going to, um, so experiment one, we mix the DNA just with this restriction endonuclease, which means it's only going to cut at the positions where I've drawn those straight lines. In experiment two, we mix the DNA with both enzymes. So it's going to cut where I've done the zigzag lines, but also where I drew these straight lines. And the DNA is then going to be put into wells in our gel electrophoresis. So there we go. It's me micro pipetting it into the wells. And this is going to be for experiment one. And this is experiment two. in case anyone joins after I said that, that's the DNA in the wells. And this is the direction of electrophoresis. And the question was, draw the bands that you would expect for experiment one and draw the bands that you would expect for experiment two. So for experiment one, just to try and make this more visual for you, experiment one, we have only got restriction and nuclease two, which was this straight line, so it's cutting here and here. So that means we'd get DNA here, we get that section, and we'd get that section. So we get three sections, three fragments of DNA, which means we have to draw three bands. And we've got one long band. I probably should have done this a bit more obvious so that this was longer and this is shorter because they look fairly similar. But this is going to be my shorter band, that one's slightly longer. So the longest one won't have moved very far. So I'm going to draw one band here, close to the start to represent this a longer length of DNA. This one is slightly longer than this one, but both of them are longer than that, so it's gonna be further up. So the next one I'm drawing is this one, which I'll draw around here. And then this one is only a little bit shorter, so I'll draw it quite close to that one. So that'll be my three bands representing the length of those DNA fragments. 
Next then, in experiment two, this time we've got both of those DNA molecules, uh, sorry, both of those um, restriction endonucleases mixed in with those DNA molecules. So that means this time we've got um, one, two, three, four, five sections. Because everywhere I've done one of those lines, that's where it's cutting. Now this one is exactly the same length. This one isn't though, because it's gonna have a cut there. So we don't have any that are quite as long as this one. So if I start, um, I'm gonna start by doing this one, which is our one that's not quite as long as this. So that means it's gonna be slightly further up than that one. This one is exactly the same. So I need to draw another band at exactly the same position as this one, which was my shortest one that time as well. But then I've got one, two, three still unaccounted for, and all three of them are shorter than this. So that means the final three all have to be up in this region to show that they are shorter than this one. And it doesn't really matter the position I put them in now, as long as I show that I've got three more further up. Realistically, that's gonna be the longest, then probably that one and that one. But as long as they are further along than that one, that is what they'd be looking for. And there we go. And that is how you answer a question like that on gel electrophoresis and restriction endonucleases. So I hope you found that helpful, that little mini recap on genetic fingerprinting, on... Um, we did gel electrophoresis briefly, and then this exam question, which is from 3.8, gene, uh, the controlled gene expression, that's what topic eight is called, but specifically, this was actually more to do with gene technologies and looking at the analysis after gel electrophoresis. So I hope you found that helpful. As I said, the new notes are coming out on Monday, and that is for OCR, AQA A level and GCSE AQA as well. A lot of you have been asking me, what if I already have the notes? So if you've already got the notes, um, then you'll be able to get it significantly discounted. Basically, you'll, you'll only be paying for the extras that have been added in because there's about 10 to 12 extra pages per topic that's been created for these. So you're essentially just paying for those extras. But if you've already got the notes, you don't need these. It's just if you wanted the additions, which are, um, oh, there we go, which are the exam examiner's tips from actual examiners, actual OCR examiners, actual AQA examiners, um, as well as the topic summaries. Also, there's questions and answers at the end of every topic as well. Then you can get the new notes if you want to, and it'll be discounted. Just look out for that in your emails. But that is it for today. Hope you found it helpful. If you do have any requests of what you'd like me to go through next week, then you can just send me a DM on Instagram and I'll get onto it. But that is it for today. 